As I drive this ring of carry I see how hard you fought to be free And I feel so spoiled, so vain I'll never complain for myself when it rains Never again One, two, three, four. Your beauty cannot be denied. It scares me to death. Oh, it fills me with joy. You've left me here in torment. When I'm long dead and gone, may the stone by my head tell tale that the day I saw your face. I was changed Oh, the day I saw your face I was changed As I drive this ring of carry I see how hard you fight to be free And I feel so spoiled, so vain I'll never complain Morning, everyone. They told me that Hopefully, that gives you a, a little bit of an idea of uh, what we're trying to sell here in Dublin, Ohio. You know, I've always thought it might be a good idea to get people in the right frame of mind if we had maybe a, a keg of Guinness in the back or sort of passing around. But I guess after last night, that probably wouldn't have really fulfilled our um, goal that we're trying to accomplish tonight. But um, I did want to take a couple minutes and, and talk a little bit about um, our brand that we launched several years ago, um, how we started it, how we've evolved it, how we continue to evolve it really on a shoestring budget, and maybe you can go back and, and use some of the things that uh, we've learned, some of the mistakes we've made, and, uh, and maybe take it back to your community as well. Um, I would like to just start a minute and talk a little bit about Dublin, Ohio, and give you an idea exactly, um, kind of a foundation of what we're talking about here. It's a very small community. Um, it's only 41,000 residents. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with, with, with Ohio, uh, it's just outside of Columbus, Ohio, which is the capital of the state of Ohio, about 25 minutes away from the, the state capital. Um, it's a very affluent community. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very known for its golf as well. For you golf fans out there, it's the home of the Memorial Tournament. Uh, Jack Nicklaus is from Dublin, Ohio. Um, actually, Dublin, Ohio, in the, the worldwide course, the Muirfield, Mur Muirfield Village Golf Club, is the only city in the world that hosts the Ryder Cup, the President's Cup, and the Solheim Cup. So um, it has a lot of golf equity in, in the community as well. Bureau-wise, uh, we're not very big. Uh, we're small. You know, we're, we're under a million-dollar budget. Uh, we only have four of us on staff. 
Um, myself, Sarah, who actually does a tremendous job on social media, she comes to this conference every year. So that tells you how important that, that we feel social media is, that we actually have one of our four people dedicated to that effort as well. Um, but we are very much a small um, organization, which makes it even more important that we had to engage our local community, our stakeholders, our partners to really help push our brand because we really didn't have that kind of um, buying power within our organization. Uh, we don't really have an agency of record, unfortunately, to do a lot of the stuff we do, so we beg and plead for a lot of the stuff that we were able to accomplish. <clears throat> uh, you guys are all experts on branding, I'm sure. But this is really one of the better uh, definitions I've, I've seen of branding, and, and I use it quite often. That it's, you know, using a brand is the only way to stand out um, and really telling the entire world about it. So, you know, it's something that we used initially to go on the branding. Um, I think when we started this, we started this back in the effort back in 2007, about seven or eight years ago. And the reason we started it is our community was kind of stagnant in terms of our visitor market. Um, we kind of hit a plateau. Um, we weren't seeing more visitors. We had a good, mar we had a good product. Um, but we weren't getting the word out very well, so we decided it was really time to kind of step back and, and go into the market and see if we could do a new branding campaign. <clears throat> all the research we did, um, typically with, uh, with all the branding that you would see, that, that you normally do, the tape, tapestry, um, a lot of in-market studies, I think we thought it was really important to make sure um, locally in our market uh, to get a gauge what people thought of our community. Um, obviously, it's important when visitors come to your market that, that they are welcomed with open arms. So we want to make sure um, and really get the perspective from not only residents, but key stakeholders locally on exactly what they perceive Dublin to be themselves and how we could best sell it to the community. And then we did a lot of visitor origin um, you know, studies as well. Um, a kind of a profile, I think this is real important, the profile of a Dublin resident. Again, we're, we're a very fluent community, 36 to 45. Uh, full-time professionals. Um, so, you know, I think it, it's important to note that our visitor um, is very similar to our uh, resident base, which, you know, I've been in many communities before where, where you launch a branding campaign where that's not the case, um, and you really have to struggle to come up with a brand um, that, that incorporates two, two different kind of people wanting to talk of visitors coming in and, and people that already live here. But we had the, the benefit of knowing that our residents and our visitors were very much alike in, in many instances. So the in-market research that we came up with, um, and this is, I think, a, a critical point of this, is that our local community really embraced the whole Irish um, thing that we had going on in town. Obviously, why are we Irish? The Dublin name. I think that if most of you thought of Dublin, Ohio, the word Dublin, you, you immediately come up with, with Irish. Our, our residents feel the same way. Um, and honestly, there, there isn't a whole lot of authenticity there, which um, I know gives us a little bit of heartache, but you know, I think we're, so, we're not selling so much authenticity all the time. There are various components of authentic authenticity that I'll get into in a little bit that we bring the Irish here, but it's also important to sell fun and, and enjoyment, and that's what we're trying to sell um, to our visitors. Um, when we went into this branding process as well, and I'll get this into in, in a minute as well, but we really were, were conscious and aware of not being disrespectful to the Irish heritage and culture. Um, so we engaged um, people, actually our, our contacts from, from Dublin, Ireland, and, and helped them, and actually a couple of them came over for this branding process and made sure we were doing things right and we weren't being disrespectful. And to the T, they all said no. Um, we see it as a fun thing. It's a celebration of our Irish culture and heritage. Um, so you know, we were very concerned about that going into it. Um, the, the community is very family friendly. Um, location, again, is very important to us. We're right in central Ohio, um, very accessible to a lot of people. Uh, we have several huge events that have kind of uh, naturally uh, were created as a result of this whole Dublin Irish, uh, this whole Irish feel. We have the second largest Irish festival um, in the United States to Milwaukee. It's held every August. This year it hit 110,000 people. Um, we have acts from all over the world that come to it, so it's a world-renowned um, Irish festival that's obviously what, what was kind of generated as part of this whole brand. Um, we have obviously St. Patrick's Day, we celebrate that, the Memorial Tournament. Um, so we have several large kind of landmark events that, that we attract a lot of visitors for. Um, corporate travelers, again, are very important to us. Um, our base in Dublin is very much a corporate base. Uh, Winnie's International is headquartered in Dublin, Ohio. Ashland Chemical, OCLC, Cardinal Health, which is the largest company in Ohio. So there's a lot of corporations that are very successful in Dublin as well. 
the vision survey, um, you know, we asked them exactly, uh, you know, to perceive what you thought Dublin to be and what it is. And these are some interesting ones. You know, obviously, objectives, asking them what they thought um, Dublin to be. Green came up golf. Um, you know, the consumer brands, if Dublin was a brand, what would it be? Lexus, DN, BMW, and then famous people. Jack Nicholas and Dave Thomas, you probably all know Dave Thomas from, from Wendy's International. He was a native son of, of Dublin, Ohio as, as well. So all this research that we did, um, and it probably took close to eight months from start to finish on the research we accomplished, especially from the local end. And these were the key elements that it came out of, that, that we truly um, provide images of Ireland across our community year round. And it's interesting, other than the Irish Festival and the St. Patrick's Day, we have three high schools in town. Uh, their names are the Shamrocks, the Celtics, and the Irish. Um, we have fire, all our fire hydrants around town are green. Uh, we have fire trucks around town that are green. Um, you know, all, a lot of the logos, the Shamrock logos are used in various uh, businesses in town. The Chamber logo, our logo, the, the City of Dublin logo as well. Um, so we've really embraced, the, the residents itself really embraced this thing that is Irish for us. So that was the most important thing out of eight months. It would have been, I'm not sure what we would have done if we would have found out that our local residents hate Irish stuff. We probably would have had to scrap it, obviously, and go on to something else. Uh, but this kind of really reinforced to us that we were going along the right path, and it was something that we could really uh, move out to the visitors as well. Um, again, as I mentioned, we're not Irish. There's no heritage to it. Um, and we really don't care. It's, it's not that important to us. Um, you know, it's funny that the reason we're Dublin, Ohio is the, the old wise tale was back in the 1800s, a little before my time, the guy that it, um, uh, uh, discovered Dublin actually gave his best friend the, um, the honor of naming it. And he loved Dublin Iron, the name Dublin Iron, so that's how they came with up to Dublin. So there's no heritage there. There's no, we don't have any kind of people coming in that were from Dublin Iron that, that set a flag and set land there. It's purely because of the name that, that we've really got this, we got this way as well. Um, and again, I think this is a key thing as, as well, that our community has had great fun with this. I mean, they use this as a celebration for our community across town. Um, one of the, the kind of the DNA that we came up with when we went through this branding research was that, you know, the name is really what conjures up the Irish associations. Um, and that's what visitors want. When they come to our town, they expect us to do something Irish. They want to see something Irish. When they get on our website, when they see us socially, um, that's really the inherent thing that, that people expect to see and expect to do. Um, and this was really kind of our, our key thing that really brought us as a staff and as an organization to light was, you know, in the future back in, um, you know, when we first launched in the late 80s and, and even when I got there in the 2000s, you know, we kind of dabbled with the Irish stuff. I mean, we had a logo, a, a Shamrock logo on our ads. Um, you know, we hired a little leprechaun to go, leprechaun that dressed up as a leprechaun to go to our events. Um, so we kind of dabbled in the Irish thing a little bit, but we never went full go, full force into it. You know, we just kind of decided at this point, it's time to begin to embrace this. This is what is going to really differentiate us as a destination against our competitors. Um, another interesting thing, when, when we did a, a lot of the research, we found that there, there were 13 Dublins in the United States. Dublin, California is the largest Dublin, um, and we were the second largest Dublin. So if you look at it that way, we thought that it was something we could own as a brand, not something that our competitors could steal from us. It's something we could gravitate toward as well. So um, that was really important to us. <clears throat> and then all this said, this is where we came up with the Irish as an attitude um, from our branding process initially. So we um, did that. We had that um, after probably eight to 10 months of research. We had all this branding research with us, and we decided to step back, rather than kind of launch it to the community and launch it to our visitors, we decided to do it right. So we decided to really sit on it for almost another six to eight months. And uh, we got our, all our ducks in a row, and we did a lot of things that you would ex expect to kind of adapt to this brand <clears throat> locally to, uh, to our organization, to our community. You know, we did a whole new, we did several photo shoots, we did videos, and actually the video that you just saw is, a, I think it's a third iteration of a video that we've done, all with incorporating the, the Dublin brand as well. You know, we created packages. I think it's important to note we've had, I think this is the fourth campaign <clears throat> that we have um, using the brand. So campaigns change. Um, and who remembers, this is a, one of our first campaigns, who remembers that thing on the top right? I mean, remember when we used to use QR codes back in the day? 
Um, so that was one of our fails that obviously it didn't work out too well um, in the past. But you know, this is one of our first ones. Um, you know, these are ones, an, another one that we did a couple years ago, and I think this, this campaign really sings to the, in essence, what we're doing, that, you know, sure, we have, we have Irish pubs, and we have Irish festivals, Irish dancing, but then we have manatees. Manatees aren't Irish. Um, um, and unless we paint the manatees green, which I'm guessing will not be a positive thing, um, it's not really ever going to be Irish. So the, the selling point is that we have this foundation of Irish, but there's a lot of great th other things to do in our, our community as well. Um, you don't need to be Irish um, in your blood. You just can have it in your soul. <coughs> Excuse me. And that was another one there. And these are some of the new ones that we have now. Um, you know, again, reinforcing the whole Irish attitude and the, some of the ads that we're doing as well. And we're even doing some merchandising that's, that's doing very well um, as well with some of the stuff. So we also obviously did uh, our website, irishisanattitude.com. Our emails are irishisanattitude. <clears throat> um, socially, if, if you look back where we were back in 2000, 2008, 2007, 2008, you know, social media wasn't anywhere near where it was now. I mean, Facebook was obviously out for a couple years. I think Twitter had just started in 2006, so that really wasn't a factor yet. There was no Instagram. Um, so we had at that point really used it a lot, but I think we've done a tremendous job now and I think socially it's enabled us to expand, extend our brand even more. Um, Sarah does a great job on our staff <clears throat> looking for ways to really extend our brand. I think the social um, medium has really enabled us to, to uh, extend it even that much further and I know you know, we have an Irish Attitude blog that we do um, on a weekly or monthly basis that is very um, effective. Um, it's interesting. Every time we do a Facebook post that has anything to do with Irish, it, it really peaks our, our social numbers as well. Because I think people are looking for that Irish thing and expect Irish stuff from us. And especially when we have St. Patrick's Day that during our Dublin Irish Festival, other Irish events, that is really the, the peak of our, our activity because people are expecting and wanting to see that Irish stuff as well. Um, obviously, our visitor center, we transformed to have that kind of feel of having Irish music inside that visitor center when people come in, uh, 365 days, our collateral material, letterheads, everything else. Uh, this was something that um, I think w was very important to us that, that we learned. I learned in a past life. Um, so you really have to engage, and I heard yesterday from the Cleveland point of view as well, that you really have to engage your local key stakeholders um, initially from the get-go. Oh, thanks, bud. And um, uh, we actually, even when we, before we started the brand, we created a brand committee. And we identified some, of our, identified some of our, I guess you could say, troublemakers in town. We wanted them to be on the, on the foundation of this whole process. Um, and we were, I was at the state, a state several years ago, and we launched a brand. And it was really done kind of in a silo. And uh, the brand, it was a great brand, it, it sung, it resonated, but you know, we kind of worked on it internally and we didn't really get people buy it, get people to buy in initially. And ultimately it didn't really succeed and I, I'm, to this day I know it's because we did not get kind of the groundswell and the support um, that we needed initially. And I think that's what we did with this. We had everyone involved from our mayor, our city council, from our hoteliers, from our attractions. Before we ever launched it to the visitors, we worked with them and told them why this would benefit them, um, ultimately why it was going to bring more visitors to, the, to, to their destination, why it's going to bring more money to their pockets, and that's ultimately what they were looking for. Um, so they had an, an inherent buy-in to this brand, whatever it would have been initially. And we all know when it comes to branding and logos and slogans, you can like it, you, don't, you probably don't like it. It's a mixed bag. But if you have a basis on why you're doing it and, and the benefit it's going to bring everyone, it really works out well. So um, we did that as well. With, we engaged our stakeholders. <clears throat> we even went to the point of having an Irish as an Attitude Day when we launched it. We, so we actually have an internal launch. Before we launched it to the visitors, had an internal launch um, to the local community on this brand and went, went around town and explained to them why it was going to be such a successful band, a brand. And the last one there, Community Awards is something we still do. We have an Irish and Attitude Award every year that we give to a local merchant or business that has adapted the brand. And uh, that's been very well received and gives us a lot of legs. <clears throat> so a lot of the results that we had the first couple years. Um, the local business industry really gravitated toward, they were looking for, for something different, unique. We all work with these big hotel brands, the Hiltons and the Marriott's, and it was interesting to see how even these major brands would adapt it, go above and beyond their, their national standards, and find a way to incorporate 
<clears throat> the brand in their work. Uh, we have Irish welcome receptions in a lot of our, our hotels. Uh, I don't know how many of you still use wake-up calls, but we have four or five hotels in town that have Irish brogue wake-up calls. Um, so you get a call, it's top of the morning to you, I won't pretend to give you an Irish brogue, but they have those in the morning. Um, you know, logos, this is a good example, Chase Hotel even changed their logo in town um, to include the brand as well. From lobby renovations, several of our hotels, you go in their lobby, it has a kind of Irish feel to it as well. Even the restaurants in town began to incorporate the, uh, the brand. So we have Irish menu items from Irish egg roll, which you see there. Grater's ice cream is a huge um, ice cream. I don't think it's national, but I know it was born in Cincinnati. They actually created a shamrock sundae um, just in Dublin, Ohio, that was tremendously successful as well to be part of the brand. Um, the community implementation, again, these are just some more examples of results of it. Um, our historic Dublin uh, uh, created an event on the third Thursday of every month. There's something called Jig Thursdays where there's, there's bagpipers and Irish bands and entertainment going around um, town. Um, that's been real positive. Even non-traditional partners. The uh, Emerald Bank in town has an Irish is an attitude uh, checking account that they launched as well to, to kind of to work with the local people. The, the Swan Cleaners Marathon and so forth. So it went beyond our, got so much momentum, it went beyond our control and even started um, you know, going over to, to non-traditional travel and tourism partners as well. So we are feeling pretty good about ourselves after a couple years. And I think one of the major mistakes that we made um, as an organization, I'm a huge believer, I'm sure all of you are too, in tracking and measuring what we did. It took us four years before we actually tracked the effectiveness of the brand. Major, major mistake. Um, I think one of the reasons in our defense was, if you remember 2009, 2010, the economy tanked. Uh, so, you know, we were limited on funds. Um, people were patting us on our back. We were winning awards with the brand. So we thought we were doing pretty well as, as a thing. But if I had to do it again, um, I we would have gone back and market the year after we launched the brand to see exactly how we were doing. Um, this is what one thing that came from the brand um, when we went in market to, to, to measure it was that people love the Irish stuff, but they were disappointed when they got in town. There just wasn't enough product in town to sufficiently meet the, the sales pitch or the marketing efforts that we were, we were doing. So sure, we had the Irish Festival, St. Patrick's Day. We had a couple Irish pubs. We had an Irish Brogue wake-up call, but is that truly an experience? Not really. So uh, we really felt that we needed to do something ourselves initially. And we have the tradition, um, we're, we're really a traditional DMO like many of you are here as well, where you know, we're sales and marketers. Um, you know, we really don't create product very often. Uh, we sell product that what the other people do, but we really felt that we needed to create product and begin to push this out and really start some momentum going that way. So we actually have created 30 unique Irish experiences on our own as an organization, as a community. And a lot of these things are, are things that you would think would be obvious, like Irish dance. We worked with a local Irish dance company um, to do an Irish dance experience. Um, you know, we have the, the, this Irish Sundays, factory tours of graders, the Shamrock Sundays, these hands-on thing of making Irish, Irish Sunday. We have a penny whistle class, an Irish penny whistle class, which is very popular. So these different experiences, a lot of them weren't really hard. I mean, the damsel on a quest is basically a girl's weekend away that includes some Irish type offerings within, within the concept as well. Um, I can tell you that our group tour market loves this stuff. They've really gravitated toward it. Um, uh, bus tours coming in town, they can't get enough of it. They, they pick a, from a laundry list uh, of a lot of these um, um, offerings and experiences we're offering. The corporate base, when, when corporate, P, corporate businesses are in town, when they're looking for evening events, they've kind of gravitated toward this. It's something unique, it's something different that other destinations don't really offer that we're offering their clientele. So it's been very popular as well. I think the other kind of component um, that we did, and these were two kind of unique things that we did, was really an enhancement program. That were two elements. One was an Irish approved business component of it, <clears throat> and then one was an Irish experience grant program. The Irish approved business, again, if you remember when we talked earlier, the research, the re and all this was based on the research that we got that there wasn't enough product in town. The Irish approved product was what? Our goal was to identify businesses around town that offered some kind of Irish experience 365 days a year. So we worked with local businesses. We said, okay, business community, if you offer something, we'll promote it, we'll market it. 
Um, we'll make sure that the visitors know to come to your establishment and spend their money um, that you're offering these kind of things. So uh, we work with partners with experiences. Right now we have, we have 14 businesses that are doing, again, we're just a small community of only 41,000 residents. So we have 14 businesses that have done this. We actually have a, <clears throat> a window sticker that identifies um, these businesses that offer the Irish experiences. We have, have a website, irishapproved.com, that's a map, an interactive map that actually points people around town to get people um, to these experiences as well. So it's been very successful um, to getting people around town and promoting some of the Irish product that we've now created in our town. The other element that we created, which we think is pretty unique, especially on, on the budget that we have, is an Irish grant program. So we've created a, a grant program that actually incents local businesses to create their own Irish product in town. So if you create an Irish product, we'll give you money to do that, and ultimately it'll bring business in, into your community. Um, it's facilitated by the Bureau, by us on staff um, as well. It, we actually went to the city of Dublin. They actually matched our grant as well, so they ponied up some money on our behalf to get people um, to, to kind of build our grant money as well. We had a tremendous amount of interest. This is only the second year we've done that, and it continues to build. Um, the other kind of uh, point that we really wanted to accomplish out of this um, grant program was to really fill the times of need that we needed for Irish experiences. Obviously, we don't need a whole lot of Irish experiences during St. Patrick's Day weekend or during the Irish Festival or during many other weekends of the year. So we, re we created a calendar, and we really identified, okay, what holes do we need to fill? Um, to really bring some of this Irish excitement, Irish entertainment, and experiences to town. So we really used um, that to really fill the time as well. <clears throat> it's been a tremendous success over the last two years since we launched. It's not even been two years. Uh, we've distributed over $55,000 in grants. Um, the first two years, we've had over 70 businesses <clears throat> request grant money from us. Uh, we've only been able to give them 31 um, uh, businesses. We've created 110 new Irish experiences around town year round that now enables us to have that product to fill to, to meet that research that tells us that we don't really have much product anymore. We think we do now. And a lot of these, a lot of these experiences are really unique. Um, you know, we have, we have typical things with Irish music in town that a local bub, pubs and, and bars have done. We have an Indonesian tea shop that actually created a part of our menu that has Irish tea. So figure that out. An Indonesian tea shop thinks it's important to have an Irish component in their, in their, on their menu to have Irish teas on there, just to be part of this program. Um, we have restaurants that have created menu items um, just to be part of the program. We have hotels that, that several hotels now have an, an Irish New Year's Eve um, that, that brings people in during that time, need during New Year's Eve to bring events as well. Our local library ha has done storytelling, um, which isn't so much uh, there for visitors, but it's very popular for local residents, which is a, a key market and very important to us as well. Cooking classes as well. So that's been very effective for us as well. <clears throat> so all this said, well, you know, what does all this mean? Um, you know, obviously we have key metrics and measures that are very important to us. Since we launched it in 2007, um, you know, we had plateaued. Like I said, we were looking for something to generate. We were very flatlined. Uh, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you the reason for these increases is purely because of the brand, but I really believe it had a lot to do with it. Um, our visitor base has increased 35% since we first lost the brand. Last year, we attracted 2.6 million visitors to the city of Dublin. Um, our bed tax revenue, which is really obviously our, our main primary funding source, has increased 41%. Um, it's helped us create an identity. I think this was, for me, this was one of the, the biggest challenges. Um, as a resident, someone that's raising our family there, um, the initial research told us that we were a suburb, or the number one re reason describing Dublin, Ohio was that we were a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. That was the number one factor. Um, we felt we had a more than a unique identity than just being a suburb. But nothing against Columbus, Ohio, it's a great city, but we felt we had an identity in and of ourselves that we were more than a suburb. Um, we're not, we'll show you in a minute the research, the final research that we did, but we're not viewed as a suburb anymore for Dublin, Ohio. Uh, local community engagement and our visibility, um, you know, key points for us. I mean, for a small staff of us, this brand has enabled us to get out in the community and interact with our key stakeholders, our city council, our city manager, our city staff, tea shops, businesses, small and large within our community now. Now they know what we do and the benefit we can bring. They see it firsthand. 
And I think even above and beyond the brand, um, you know, being relevant in your community, and that, that's kind of a hot word in our world right now, is relevancy in the DMO, DMO world because, you know, at any minute our funding can get pulled for something else. And I think this brand has enabled us to be relevant in the community because I can give them examples firsthand of what, what the visitor market, how important travel and tourism is, how important the visitor market is to them, how it affects their bottom line, how it brings in jobs, how it brings money into the community. <clears throat> and then here are some of the results as well that you've seen um, from the branding. Again, you know, it's, we went back to the market and actually, we actually did all these initiatives um, back to see if we moved the new, and went back to see if we moved the needle at all. And we had, and, and you can see that the top one there is, is something that was very surprising and a good thing that now our strongest adjective describing the Dublin, Ohio is not we're a suburb of Dublin, Ohio, and now we're, we're an Irish-inspired community. And in fact, being a suburb of Dublin, Ohio was only 9% after being 32% when we first started this in 2006. So um, in a way, I think we've helped create a, our own identity. And you can see that bottom one that we've really solidified um, our brand um, and, and being a, a destination in of itself separate of Columbus, Ohio. So I, I'd like to kind of end on, on one thing. Obviously, w with a brand, um, it's critical when there's only four of us on staff to really live, breathe the brand every day um, at the office. So we do everything. I want to get, share one example. We all have office pools with the, with the NCAA tournament every year. And with only four of us, the, the, the pot of money is not going to be that high for, for the NCAA tournament. So our, our penance is we actually penalize the loser of our bracket. And the loser of our bracket has to dress up as a leprechaun um, downtown Dublin um, with hashtag lost my bracket during a, a time after the tournament's over in March. So um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, again, I think it, it's a brand that from a, from a shoestring budget we've, we've grown. Um, it's something that evolves every day that we try to sell every day. And, and it's something now that we track annually on a, on a basis to make sure um, we continue to extend that. <clears throat>